it was 1969, the beautiful day to fly. We were about 100 feet above the ground when I started noticing that something was wrong. It was engine failure. Trees were filling our windshield. I found myself above the crash site. And while I'm processing what I'm looking at, I can see a pilot, and this is me. No two near-death experiences are the same. Out of nowhere, a trailer truck kept me head on. But they typically occur in a very consistent process. We began to go down the river, and my boat became pinned. I was drowning. The first thing that happens is called an out-of-body experience. And they come to a place of exquisite beauty. They very commonly see a light. Deceased relatives come to meet them. The first person I saw was my grandfather. Now I'm traveling like a rocket ship, straight upwards. And with that, <laughs> oh my god, I'm alive. But not every near-death experience is a good one. 23% had hellish experiences. I saw a black tunnel. I was just falling. I wasn't in fear. I was in terror. It was just darkness. Put me back. I don't belong here. I heard a voice before I woke up. You still have a purpose on Earth. I was very skeptical. I never felt alive and then dead. I felt alive and then more alive had full brain recordings from the dying human brain. Even though they were unconscious, they were able to give corroborative evidence. She's described herself that she just shouldn't know. The same right. You can't be mystified by that question. What happens after you die? This really does show that there is life after death. One of the latest films to hit silver screens across North America explores the deep curiosity so many of us have about the afterlife. The movie is After Death and has been sparking deep conversations about what happens when we die, inviting viewers to challenge their preconceived notions while instilling a sense of wonder about the mystery that awaits us all. I'm so honored to be joined by the director of said film, Stephen Gray, to find out what prompted him to get involved. Welcome to Huntley Street. Steven. So, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's great to have you, my friend. You know, um, you have an interesting history with Huntley Street. I think I just want to cover that right off the top because f for many years you used to watch the program with That's your right. mother-in-law, Deanna. That's right. Right? Yeah. That's yep. kind of cool. And here you are today talking about this amazing project. Um, I find it fascinating that although many people can be uncomfortable talking about their faith, they are open to conversations about the afterlife. And why do you think that is? Yeah, I, I, mean, I think, you know, questions about, you know, the morality of heaven and all that is something that, you know, affects every single person. And death is something that affects all of us. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's a profound kind of question that um, everyone has on their minds. In the film, you, you, you feature a number of first-person accounts. We'll, we'll, you refer to them as survivors. Of course, they're experts and there's doctors and scientists and and others that, that add credibility to this whole exploration. But, um, you know, for our viewers, how do you qualify a near-death experience? So the, the term near-death experience kind of gets used broadly um, around. In our film, we define it very specifically as people who clinically died, um, had an experience, and then came back to talk about it. Interesting, interesting. And, and often described as autoscopic, so you're actually you know, you're in a conscious state. I mean, these people describe being very conscious in the moment. Yeah. Really, they're not really being a divide between them as we see it here and in their out-of-body state and them feeling very much as real in that moment as we do right here. I think it's, it's very, very fascinating. Um, you have a, a, a deep personal connection to this theme. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what sort of sparked your interest in this in this? film to make this film in the first place yeah so I've been a filmmaker for about 15 years now uh, but a number of years ago my uh, brother-in-law Marco he was killed in a car wreck 
And so that kind of caused me to ask a lot of questions about, you know, the reality of heaven. So I grew up as a Christian, you know, going up to, ch to church all my life, uh, raised in a Christian home, and, um, you know, read the Bible and, and understood about, you know, the faith that we have and the hope that we have in heaven. Um, but all of a sudden it was just, you know, that was kind of challenged. And um, I just need to know, you know, where my brother-in-law was. So that kind of led to uh, me kind of coming across stories of people who clinically died and had these experiences mm -hmm. and came back. And, you know, they're, they're very bold claims. They're very big claims. You know, we, you know, some of the stories I came across were Don Piper, who wrote the, the book 90 Minutes in Heaven. He's in, he's in our film. Uh, I understand he's been on the show before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that's a pretty bold statement, right? You, you died and, uh, and that there's this car wreck. And sure enough, there's going to be evidence. There should be evidence that surrounds that. And that's something that we wanted to kind of qualify with the film. A lot of the people that we um, included in the film, um, they, there's medical transcripts or there's evidence or there's, or there's you know, um, EMTs or there's first responders or eyewitnesses to, to the scene. Um, and so that was a really important component to that because we want to have evidence to back up you know, that they actually did die. And then even more interesting for me was a lot of the people that we included in the film actually had a lot to lose in telling their story. Mm. So Mary Neal, who's in our film, she wrote the book uh, To Heaven and Back. She's an orthopedic spine surgeon, and you know, she has her own clinical practice. She doesn't you know, need book sales. You know, that's, that's not the reason for her uh, publishing her story. And she's a very private person. You know, mm -hmm. she, doesn't, she doesn't want to expose uh, herself and her family to, to the world but she felt so compelled to tell her story because in her near-death experience, she was actually without oxygen, you know, drowned for 30 minutes in uh, southern Chile. And um, she had this profound near-death experience and she was shown a life review. So she, she, she was with Jesus and he was showing her her entire life that played out, you know, from the moment uh, she was born till, till that moment. And she was shown um, these profound, you know, moments where um, where she was interweaving in, in different people's lives. And, and basically, the, the choices that she made in her life, big and small, they had a ripple effect on others. And actually, she was shown um, in this life review 30 people out from herself where, you know, these are people she's never going to meet, right. people she doesn't know. But the decisions she's making in her life, they, they affect others. And she, she was shown that perspective, which just, I think is just a small glimpse of you know, how God sees us and how, you know, we, we don't understand how interconnected we are and, you know, the, the decisions we make and, and how that impacts other people. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I have to, I mean, I had the opportunity to watch the screener and I was moved to tears multiple times. I mean, even hearing, you know, the doctor's story and, and the tragedy that she faced even after she had the opportunity to come back and tell the world her story. And we don't want to give too much away of, of, of the rest of, of her uh, narrative, but I want to ask you, you know, Stephen, through the process of making this film, has there been a deeper sense of resolve where your brother-in-law Marco is concerned? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I got to kind of vicariously live through, you know, what what some of these people experienced. Um, and Dale Black was the, one of the first stories we told. He, he's a pilot who died in a plane crash in 1969 in Burbank, California. And he talks about, you know, the moment of impact and him standing above his body 15 feet in the air and, and recognizing that that's him, you know, but he, he didn't feel pain. Um, he, he, was, he was in a place that was, um, you know, was outside of his body, just, just felt like better than he's ever felt his entire life. And some of the things he starts describing and the things he saw, um, it just kind of made me think about, you know, what, what did my brother-in-law, you know, feel? And, I have a tremendous sense of hope um, that I'm going to see him again. And, you know, I, I want others to experience that, too, through, through these stories. Yeah, and you, and you reference, you know, that specific story and multiple accounts. You know, I was amazed at the undeniable peace and light that so many of them describe in their experience. And it's like it's a seamless transition from the here and now that you and I are experiencing into their, we'll call it their near-death experience or their out-of-body experience. Um, you know, how do you think this sense of love, light, and unity, which were pretty common words across their descriptives across different cases, 
how do you think that's even possible for them to experience that in that moment when their body is being ravaged by some sort of physical trauma? Yeah, I mean, it's, it was amazing to me. Uh, we, we included about 14 different people in the film who had near the experiences. And, uh, you know, some of them are in the United States, but some of them are around the world. And, and like I, we talked about, it, that's a common thing they would describe is that they're, meet, they're meeting a being of light that, as they describe, is like the burning of a thousand suns. You know, and so it's, it's not like a, a light bulb or, or, or the sun, but it's a light that, you know, I think in the, in the, if in the physical here on earth, I think if we saw it, we'd probably be incinerated. <laughs> right. But there, um, it's not terrifying. You know, this light that's like a thousand burning suns is something that's invitational and it's unconditional love. And it's a love that, as they describe, it's, it's a love that, you know, we can't even experience here. It's unconditional. There is always a condition behind love here on earth. And there it's, it's something, you know, that's, you know, just a deeper sense of love that, you know, it's inexpressible. Right. And for those of us that have a faith in Jesus Christ, we also recognize that there is, you know, heaven to be gained and hell to shun. And yeah. you guys didn't shy away from that in telling this story where, you know, some filmmakers might be so inclined to only focus on the light and the love yeah. and sort of moving in that direction. Why did you feel it was important to also tell the other side of that story? Well, I mean, as we started to come across these, these stories of near-death experiences, that was inevitably something that was coming up. And it was interesting to me that, you know, that's not really something that's usually talked about in film, and it's certainly not in a lot of, you know, these big published books. Um, hell seemed to be uh, an experience that people were having. Right. And I think there's a lot of, um, you know, shame and, and there's a lot of reasons to, to not come forward and, and, and tell that story. You know, for people who are talking about having a heavenly experience, a lot of, there's a lot of skepticism. There's a lot of people that would say, you know, that's all just, you know, making, making up stories. So I think there's that much more reason to not talk about hell. Um, and yet there were those stories. And so we just thought it would be fair to include that because this is an experience that people are having just the same as the heaven experience. And so we, we want to show both sides and be fair. In our film, we have three different people who had hellish near-death experiences. And I, I think that kind of is kind of reflective of, of the type of stories that are out there. Yeah, and, and I have to say to our viewers, you know, the way you depicted some of their stories as, as these survivors narrate their own stories, but you have these depictions, these visualizations of what they were experiencing. Just absolutely amazing and... Um, you know, uh, just very, the cinematography and, and just the way it was captured and delivered. Uh, congratulations to you guys, just remarkable. Just in our last couple of minutes here today, Stephen, what do you hope the viewer that walks into the theater is gonna take away from this film? Yeah, my hope for the film is that um, it gives people a sense of hope. Yeah. So, um, you know, for me, it, it helped me with grief. It helped me with, you know, some of those really challenging questions about, you know, the reality of heaven. And my hope is that it causes people to reflect on the life that we're living here. You know, we don't know how much time we have. Um, death is a reality for everyone. It's a reality for me. It's a reality for every person here on earth. And yeah, we just don't know how much time we have. Unfortunately for me, I, I learned that life is fragile and it can be short. You know, my brother-in-law, he died at 36 years old. And so, you know, with the time that we have here, my hope is that it, it, it causes us to reflect on if there is life after death, if there is a heaven, you know, what could that mean for the life we have here and right. how could we live with an eternal perspective? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, how can people, people get information about the film? Because it's coming out October the 27th, correct? Yeah. Theaters across North America. Yeah. It's so, amazing. That's unbelievable. So we're going to be in uh, above 2,000 theaters across North America. Remarkable. Yeah. We're constantly opening up more and more theaters here in Canada, more in the United States. And uh, yeah, we're excited for people to go out and, and see the film in theaters starting October 27th. Okay. Um, it'll be playing for a while, multiple showings a day. And uh, you can buy tickets um, at crossroads.ca slash after death. And there we actually have a, we have a, a really cool program, uh, pay it forward program. So um, for others who want to uh, buy tickets for other people who not, might not otherwise be able to see it, you can pay it forward and buy a ticket. You can buy as many tickets as you want. Um, and then also, for we want to make it accessible for everyone. So for, in the same way, if you can't afford a ticket, um, you can claim a free ticket there from people who've paid it forward. That's so cool. And as I understand, I mean, your release 
being as, um, as expansive or extensive as it is right now puts this documentary in a, in a very sort of special category, you know, of the top categories for a release for a documentary film. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a top 10 all-time release for a documentary Amazing. for opening theaters, which is unbelievable. It's, you know, and that's honestly a, a God thing. Angel Studios, who, who's putting this out there, they're the same team behind The Chosen. That's right. And so this is their next big theatrical release, and we're really excited about that. Well, that's great. Uh, again, for our viewers, in case you didn't catch the title of the film, we're going to give it to you again. It's After Death, coming to a theater near you. I would highly recommend you go out and watch this film. Take someone, take the friend of yours that perhaps is a skeptic about the afterlife and what uh, hope that we can have in Christ in the here and now. Um, I found it incredibly thought-provoking and emotional uh, on so many levels. Thank you, Stephen. Um, and I promise our viewers will not be disappointed. Thank you for sharing your story and being so transparent with us today. I think it also bears mentioning that on the same day of the release of the film, there's also going to be a music inspired by the After Death film, which is yeah. going to feature a bunch of uh, CCM artists, uh, you know, the likes of Maverick City music and others with songs that have been inspired after their screening of the film, which is super cool. Um, and if you're watching this program right now and you're saying, you know what, I am that skeptic, you know, I'm not sure, I promise you, go out, give the film a chance. Go in with an open mind. Be open to what God might be trying to speak to you in this moment. And the reality is that he loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And if you're walking through life with a sense of uncertainty or you're not really sure what's next, I, I, I would challenge you to ask God. Just go to him in prayer and say, Lord, help reveal to me what this life is all about and what I can be hopeful for in the future. And we've got prayer partners that would love to pray with you. They'd love to encourage you on this faith journey. They would love to pray that prayer with you. So you can call that number any time of the day, any day of the week, whenever you're watching this interview, one 273 Four 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 four, and uh, they are some of the most loving, beautiful, non-judgmental people you will ever speak to. I promise you that. One more time, ticket information is crossroads.ca forward slash after death. Go out, follow the links, pay it forward, or claim your ticket if you can't afford to go on your own, and uh, and be prepared to to be um, just to have your heart opened and and your faith encouraged. I promise you that. Thanks so much for being with us today, Stephen. Thanks so much for having me, Mark.